Hello everyone, this is Dr. E, and for today we're going to learn how to compute and interpret the standard deviation. Standard deviation is one of the many uh, measures of spread and we're going to be working on how to compute and interpret that specific value that we often see in a statistics problem but the problem is sometimes we don't even understand what it means. When we say average or mean, most of us would probably understand that the average or the mean is simply adding the data set divided by the total number and then we'll get the average. But for standard deviation, we're going to make sense of what it is in our lesson for today. Now, how are we going to compute for the standard deviation or the measure of the spread of a certain group of data? We'll start with how we measure the range. And range is also another form of measure for our spread. And to be able to find the range of our distribution or data set, all we need to do is to find the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value in our data. So to give you an example, let's say we have negative 3, 5, 9, and 19. And we need to find the spread or the range or how wide our data set is in this given distribution. So all we need to do is to find the smallest number and the biggest number. And in this case, the highest number is 19 and the lowest number is negative 3. And then we find its difference. So 19 minus negative 3 is going to give us 22. So the range or the spread of this data set is equal to 22. Now there is another way of measuring the spread also known as the variability or the average differences of our data set in statistics. And that is computing for the standard deviation or the variance. So what is standard deviation? The variance and standard deviation of a data or a data set measures the spread of the data about the mean of the data set. So spread, mean, and data set. So those are the three keywords that we're going to be using and that's how we're going to be calculating for the variance and the standard deviation. Now notice that the variance and the standard deviation or their formula is quite this, the same. The only difference is that the variance which is s squared equal to the sum of x or the square of the difference of the mean and the x all over n minus 1, the standard deviation, which is just s without the square, is the square root of the variance. So these two for formula, they are both measuring the spread of the distribution. And this is what we're going to be using in our formula for today. And we're going to be computing for the standard deviation. But for now, it's still the variance because I haven't gotten its square root. So if we take the square root of this, then we'll have its variance. So let's start with our first example, which is, in this example, I have collected my students' information. So let's say in my calculus class, I asked five of my students and asked for their number of siblings. And in my data set, I'm going to be using this formula, which is finding the variance and then eventually the standard, standard deviation of my student's number of siblings. So I asked Spencer, who has three siblings, George, who has two, Austin, who has one, Marisol has three, and Maria, who has two siblings. And we know that in this formula, we're seeing a common symbol, which is our X bar. And in statistics, X bar is simply the mean or the average of our data set. And in this case, our X bar is simply 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 divided by the sample size, which is 5, and that is going to be our mean of the, our distribution. And from the definition a while ago, we saw the mean or the average 
being used in the definition and also in the formula. So we will be needing our mean first before we can find our standard deviation. And our mean is equal to using our calculator, or you can do it by hand as well if you want to, is going to equal to 2.2. So 2.2 is our mean, and we're going to be using this later on in our formula. And in our formula for the standard deviation, which is quite big, we're going to show you two methods on how to work this out. One is horizontal method, or by just using the formula as it is, or creating our own manual pen and paper Excel spreadsheet and compute for the variance. So we'll start with the given number of siblings or data set and we are going to use the variable x for this uh, column and our x is 3, 2, 1, 3, 2 which is the number of siblings in our data set. The next thing that I'm going to use is x minus x bar. So x minus x bar is simply 3 minus the x bar of 2.2 so 3 minus 2.2 is equal to, we'll compute it later on, 2 minus 2.2, 1 minus 2.2, 3 minus 2.2, and 2 minus 2.2. And basically, we are organizing all the values of x minus x bar squared, which is giving us this symbol or the summation symbol, which means we're going to add up all our values later on. But first, let's find the difference between x and x bar or mean in this distribution. And I have it, or we can use the calculator, or we can just use the slide because in my slide, I already found the values or the difference between the x and the x bar, and it's going to give us 0 0.8, 0 0.2, or negative 0 0.2, negative 1.2, 0.8 and negative 0.2 and this is now our second column and then the next column will be the progression of our formula and we'll have x minus x bar squared not like that but quantity squared so we'll take the difference of x and x bar which is this and then we're going to square it using our calculator or our slide we'll be able to figure that out because the square of 0.8, the square of negative 0.2, the square of negative or negative 1.2 is going to be 0 0.64, 0 0.04, 1 0.44, 0 0.64, and 0 0.04. And now that we have this column, which is this numerator that we have right here, we can now use the summation symbol, which is basically adding this all up, and its sum is equal to 2.8. So 2.8 is the sum of our third column, and all we need to do is to follow the formula, which is the numerator all over the denominator of n minus 1, and n is the sample size, and our sample size is 5. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. That's why our s squared is equal to 2.8 all over 4, which is we know is the var variance of our distribution. And s squared, using our calculator, will give us 0.7. And this is now our variance, which we can use as a measure of our spread in this distribution. But since we're working on computing for the standard deviation and not the variance, all we need to do is to take the square root of 0.7, like what happened here, and square root of 0.7 is equal to 0.84. So the standard deviation is 0.84 in our data set, and this is basically the spread or the average differences of the number of siblings in my class, which is really small considering that we have 3, 2, 1, 3, and 2. This particular data set or the value of our standard deviation of 0.84 will become bigger if let's say Spencer had 7 siblings, George has 1, Austin has 22. Is it possible? Maybe. Yeah, it is possible if you have half siblings. Marisol has 
zero or no sibling because Marisol is an only child and Maria has only five siblings. So notice that there are huge differences in the examples that I have shown you and when that happens our standard deviation value will become bigger. So it means if we're going to visualize what a standard deviation is, the smaller your standard deviation is, the closer those data set is with each other. So that's basically what it means. And to give you a better idea of uh, how to visualize standard deviation, let's use this experiment in which I group my Algebra 2 class into two, and I measure their heights. The first group, I had Lisa, Michelle, Dominique, Mariano, and Brian, and that is their height in inches. And if you want to visualize it better, if you are five foot six, that means to change it in inches, five foot six is five times 12, which is 60, plus six is 66, so that means 66 inches is 5 foot 6, so you'll be able to understand or have an idea on how short or tall the, these people are. And our second group, we have Roberto, Sean, Ian, Francisco, and Tyrone. Obviously, their height are taller than the first group, but the question is, which one has a closer differences from each other between group one and group two. So which one has a more, uh, let's say, consistency when it comes to height in this grouping? All you need to do is to use your formula, use your calculator to find the standard deviation, and you'll be able to tell which between group one and group two has a smaller average differences based on our formula for the standard deviation. So which group, group has a more consistent height distribution between group one and group two using their standard deviation? I'm going to compute for it now. I have 4.72 inches for group one. And for group two, I have 3.35 inches, which means between group one and group two, group two their average differences is closer to each other. That means if you line them up together, their height differences will just be small. It's going to be really, really small. Basically, you will see a height consistency or the height that is a little bit the same with each other as opposed to group one, wherein you will see a tall people, a short people, an average person, and so on. So that is basically how you can visualize standard deviation so that you will have a better understanding of why we are calculating that single number in statistics. So therefore, group two has a more consistent height distribution because their average height difference is smaller than group one. And in uh, st statistics, the smaller your standard deviation, the more consistent, consistent or the smaller your uh, average differences is in your data set. And for your number bender challenge for today, we're going to be testing if the staff in this McDonald's branch is efficient in delivering their service to their customers. So the boss tells the staff that their serving time is good if their standard deviation, not their average, but their standard deviation is under four minutes. And the staff that he has at that time has those times and minutes of uh, servicing their customers in their drive through sections, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, two minutes fast, but there's also eight minutes, seven minutes, and two and a half minutes. So using your skill in uh, statistics, tell me if the staff did a good job on uh, serving their customers using the boss's standards of a um, standard deviation of under four minutes. And that is our lesson in standard deviation. And again, when we are working with the statistics, it's not enough that we are understanding and learning how to use the formula to find the value that we're looking for. But we also need to make sure that we are understanding how we can explain those numerical value in verbal form. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time. Bye!